Let's try to diagram the first sentence of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. We're going to find that it's quite challenging. Uh, and that would be four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. That's a mouthful even to say, but to diagram, uh, you'll see that there's actually quite a few little nooks and crannies that are, uh, that are interesting to deal with. First of all, of course, we need a baseline. So, I will draw it up here. Uh, four score and seven years ago, okay, that, whatever that is, that's uh, adverbial, that's answering the question when. Let's put that off for a bit. It's actually a very thorny uh, thing to do. Uh, our fathers did something or other. So there, there is something that, that we can get a, get a hold of. Fathers is the subject. Which fathers? Our fathers. Um, the verb is actually kind of interesting. Uh, what did our fathers do? They brought forth a nation. Well, um, another way of saying that that is exactly the same is brought a nation forth. They brought a nation forth. Forth is a lot like down in the sentence, he brought the house down, like what you might say of a singer or a comedian who just totally made the audience go wild. They brought the house down. You could equally say they brought down the house. That shows you that these, these little words function the same, forth and down, and forth and down. It sounds like football. Uh, but uh, in fact, they're not prepositions, as you might suppose, and they're not adverbs exactly. We call them particles. And they are uh, attached to the verb in such a way that you could put them either before or after the direct object that follow them or that precede them. And what we do with particles in diagramming is we, we put them right with the verb. It's one of the uh, few places where you would put in the verb position something that whose part of speech is not verb. I mean, fourth is just that is not a verb. You can't put it in the past tense if they didn't. Yesterday, we, we forced. You can't do that. It's not a verb, but we put it in with the verb. But that is a particle. So, what was brought forth? Uh, there's a direct object. What was brought forth? If there's an answer to that question, uh, and there is, a nation. That, that means we're dealing with a direct object. So, nation. Uh, let me... Hold off putting a and new there. Those would both be adjectives, of course. Which nation? A nation. Which nation? A, a new nation. That's which nation. Uh, those are going to be adjectives. Uh, let's deal with the uh, other stuff that's hanging off of nation. A new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Those two things are both participial phrases. Conceived in liberty, that's the first one, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. That whole thing is the second participial phrase. Uh, and they answer the question, which nation or what kind of nation, uh, a nation conceived in liberty, that's what, that's what kind of nation. So uh, to do this, let's have them descending from here. Now the, the tricky thing is, is that there's two of them, and so we need to make a provision for, uh, uh, for that. And we're going to do that by doing this weird thing. I'm splitting this line. You'll see why I'm drawing a dotted line there in a minute. Uh, now I'm going to descend there, because now what I have is a participle, conceived in liberty. So that's our first participial phrase, and I'll put conceived here, to, and that's how we note that something is a participle. I'll get rid of that. Uh, conceived how? We have a prepositional phrase dangling from uh, conceived. How is it conceived? In liberty. That's how. So here we have a prepositional phrase. Uh, modifying conceived and functioning adverbially. So that's one of our 
participial phrases. This is where we would put the and. This and is joining, it's a coordinating conjunction, and what it's coordinating is two participial phrases uh, functioning as adjectives, as participial phrases always do. So that's what is being coordinated, and we make that look just like the other one. So it's conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition. Okay, so dedicated is our participle. Okay, dedicated. Now we dedicated how? Well, to the proposition. So, ooh. Boy. Well, I think I can fit. Uh, dedic but I'm not sure, so I'm going to make this a little shallower. I'm sorry. I apologize. But uh, dedicated. Okay. Dedicated how? To the proposition. So to goes here. So we have another prepositional phrase functioning adverbially, just as we had in liberty up there. To proposition, that's the object of the uh, 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 preposition, the object of the preposition is proposition. Uh, which proposition? The proposition. Okay, so we didn't hit rock bottom, that's probably just around the bottom of the screen. Now we have something interesting. The proposition that all men are created equal. Uh, that all men are created equal, that might uh, make you think that, uh, that it's a relative clause, which proposition, the proposition that all men are created equal, but that's not right. Uh, that all men are created equal is not modifying proposition, it is the proposition. The proposition is that all men are created equal. You, you wouldn't be able to say that sentence, the proposition is that all men are created equal, if that all men are created equal uh, were uh, merely a relative clause. Uh, so, for example, the, uh, uh, the hat which is on the table is blue. Uh, you can't say, the hat is which is on the table. That sounds crazy. But you can say, the proposition is that all men are created equal. You couldn't say, the hat is that is on the table either. If it were the hat that is on the table is blue, you can't say, the hat is that is on the table. That's because that is on the table is a relative clause, but uh, that all men are created equal is an appositive and is therefore nominal. So how do we do that? Well, to mark an appositive, we put a parentheses here. As it turns out, we're going to need a stand, a pedestal, to put the appositive on. And so let's make it a nice big one. So we have some room to spread out here. Uh, and I can go all the way over here. So the proposition is that all men are created equal. Boy, I hope, I hope this all fits. So men, which men? All men. So men is the subject. All men. All men are created. Now, what I would do, ooh, we're really coming right to the edge here. Uh, what I would do here now, if, now this is in the passive voice, all men are created. If this were in the active voice, and it were, say, God created all men equal, uh, we, would, we would clearly have this situation. He created and then men would be the direct object. And what equal would be, would be the objective complement. He created them equal. Uh, so that would be, he made me happy. He created, or he made me happy. It would be diagrammed the same way. Uh, he created men equal. So this thing is an objective complement when it's expressed in the active voice. In the passive voice, uh, 
we should therefore not make equal, it's not an adverb, it's not, uh, it's, uh, it's not a noun, it's not a direct object of any kind, it is complementary and therefore we should mark it this way. So, uh, all men are created equal. The that, as you see, has no place to sit on this line. Uh, that is because this that is an expletive. And when that happens, we, said, we send that up onto its own little pedestal. I, I'm wondering if that's over the frame. So I'll make it a very stubby pedestal. Sorry that. Uh, but there it is. So now what do we have here? <coughs> Our fathers brought forth, we don't have on this continent, a new nation. So now you can see why I held off. I just want to stick the adjectives descending from nation wherever I can put them. So a new nation uh, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. So now that leaves us with four score and seven years ago, uh, what a pain that is going to be. So that is answering the question, when? When did they bring forth? Uh, and the way I would, so that's adverbial, and it's clearly descending from brought forth. So what we would do here, and you may not like this, so ago is going to be the adverb that we build this whole thing around. How long ago? Four score and seven years. That's how long. That's how we know that the four score and seven years is modifying ago. So ago belongs above four score and seven years ago in our diagram. This is what's being modified. Uh, now, four score and seven years ago. How many years? Four score and seven. That's how many. So that tells you that the next, that four score and seven modify years, and that years is therefore going to be here, and four score and seven is going to be down here. Now, what we would do, or what I would do, and here I think you know diagrammers might actually disagree, but uh, if we had a simpler situation like as the sentence, I left last year. I left. The way we handle nouns that uh, function adverbially is, indeed, we have to have them descending from the, in this case, the verb that they're modifying, left when, left last year. But we put them on a line, uh, a horizontal line, to indicate that they are nouny, uh, or that they are essentially nouns, uh, and we would put last uh, here. That's and that's really functioning adjectivally, which year, last year. So uh, that's a refresher course, so we remember that we put these adverbial sorts of uh, uh, nouns, uh, we diagram them this way. So how many years ago? Four score and seven years ago. So to make this work here, I would do that. So that shows that we're modifying ago. I would put years here. Whoops, I need to spell years correctly, of course. Years. How many years? Which, and now that's an adjectival question, which is sort of what you would expect, since years is a nouny kind of thing, even though it's functioning adverbially. Four score and seven. So now what I do here, we have another coordinating conjunction. Uh, so we split again. We're going to have a dotted line here. Now a score is a, is a word like years in that a score is, is a nouny sort of thing. Uh, a score is a group of 20. Just as a year is 365 days, a score is a group of 20 things. Um, so years, what would we do here? We would, we would do something similar to what we did with years. We would make a little uh, na horizontal line for score. Uh, 
how many score? So it's how many years for uh, a score? Uh, how many years? How many scores? Four score. So four score and and here I would put this parallel to score seven. Four, four score and seven. Now I think this may be it. Let's 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 uh, read it aloud and see if we have the whole thing. Uh, well, I, maybe I should capitalize this to show that that's where the sentence begins. It's funny, it's sort of the sentence begins on the outskirts of the diagram, but there you have it. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth, ah, I missed something, on this continent. Where did they bring it forth? On this continent. I knew I, I left that out because I knew I was going to have trouble fitting everything in. So on continent, this, which continent? This continent. So this is an adverbial prepositional phrase, uh, modifying brought forth, this is a is adjectival, which continent, this continent, so we show that. So, let's try again. Four, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Ah, we did it. So that is the diagram of the first sentence of Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. And it's quite something to look at. Let me just get the whole thing there, because equal didn't quite come out. But there it is. There's the whole diagram.